Hi, my name is Lavinia and this is Peter. Welcome to Games Made Easy, a channel to learn board games quickly and easily. Today, I'm very happy to teach and give you tips on how to play the Catan expansion of Explorers and Pirates. An expansion that takes Catan to a whole new level of board game, but yet stays true to Catan. What is fun in Explorers and Pirates is how each of the five scenarios grows progressively more complex and each of them teaches you how to play the rules until you get to play the whole setup of Explorers and Pirates. Now, in this video, I'm going to teach you the basic rules of the game, which are in scenarios one and two. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Before we start, if you're not familiar with Catan, you should watch our video here where I explain the rules of the base game which you will need for Explorers and Pirates. In Explorers and Pirates, you still play a settler in the island of Catan, but now the Catanians are more interested in exploration than trade and are seeking riches in the Southern Moon Island and the Northern Sun Island. Well, the rules are divided into five scenarios, they're more like tutorials. Each of them focuses on one new aspect of the game while incorporating the rules of the previous scenario. If you're new to Catan, it is recommended that you play them one by one. Now, let's have a look at the first scenario, Land Ho, and the basic setup. For these, you will need a lot of components from the base game, the six frame pieces and 14 terrain hexes, but leave out two fields, one pasture, one hill, and the desert. Take all the roads and settlements, but not the cities. The two dice, but not the robber. All the resource cards, but not the development cards. You need most number tokens. Do not use the two and only use one five and one nine. Also, you will never need the longest road and the largest army cards. That new components from Explorers and Pirates you will need for this first scenario. Build a board using the Catan frames and adding a one, a two, two B3s, C1, C2, D1, F1, F2, as shown here. Place the base game terrain hexes exactly as shown. Then you place the number tokens also exactly as shown. Separate the orange sun and the green moon terrain hexes in two piles. Shuffle them and randomly place each face down as shown here. Separate and shuffle the green moon and orange sun tokens in two piles. Place them face down near the matching region. Give the four harbour settlements, the three ships and the two settlers of the corresponding colour to each player. Then you give two gold to each player and place the rest near the board. Finally, give the corresponding cost card to each player. The game starts like a regular Catan, except you need to use the starting position shown in the rules. So you place your settlement, your road, your harbour settlement, your ship and your settler like that on the ship. Each player takes the resources surrounding the settlement. In a three-player game, you don't place the fourth colour, but in a two-player game, place all four colours. The other two are not played, but serve as obstacles. Only remove their ships and settlers. There are also a few rules that change from a Catan based game. There are no cities in Pirates and Explorers, and therefore you cannot upgrade settlements to cities. If you do not receive resources from the roll this turn, you collect one gold from the supply, unless you roll a seven. Also, while there's no robber and you cannot block a terrain, rolling a seven still robs half the cards of players who have more than seven cards in their hand. Also, your starting settlement harbour allows you to trade three to one like generic harbours in the base Catan. The same way you can trade three resources of the same type for one gold. You can also use this gold to trade with other players and even to buy resources. Twice per turn, you can buy up to two resources for two gold each. Before we start, let me explain the harbour settlements and the ships. Harbour settlements can only be built on the coast and can cost two grain and two ore. You need them to build ships and load settlers onto them. When you build a ship, pay one wood and one wool and place one extremity of the ship next to the harbour. Settlers are built in the harbour, they cost the same as regular settlements. They need to be transported by ship to their final destination. Now let's look at a new phase of the game, the movement phase, which is what happens once you are done with the trade and build phase. You may move all your ships during this phase and perform actions with them. Ships move along the edges of the sea hexes, along the coast, offshore and even on the edges of the frame. 
Ships have four movement points per turn. Each movement point allows you to move your ship one hex in any direction. You move your ships one after the other. You must complete one movement before you move the other. In addition to the four movement points, once per turn you can spend one wool to add two movement points. Finally, two ships can occupy the same place. You can also move past these two ships, but cannot stop on an edge where you already have two ships. Ships are used to transport various game pieces. In this first scenario, they're only used to transport settlers. At the harbour, if you have two ships, you can also transport settlers or goods from one ship to the other. Loading or transporting settlers or goods from a ship to land or vice versa doesn't cost a movement point. You can also move, load or unload and continue your movement if you have points left. Finally, note that if you want to build a new ship and you already have three on the board, you can move one of your existing ships through any hold overboard and place it near your harbour settlement. You can also use your ships to discover the sun or moon islands. To do that, just move your ship next to an unexplored hex and stop. Once your ship touches an unexplored hex, it must stop and cannot move farther that turn. Flip the hex. If it's a terrain hex, take the top token from the corresponding pile, sun or moon, and place the number on the hex. Also collect the corresponding resource. If it's a sea hex, you collect two gold. Remember that although you can no longer trade or build using resource cards after the movement phase, if your boat is carrying a settler, you can build a settlement immediately because you're not using resource cards to do so. For this, place a settlement at one of the extremities of your ship, either here or here, and then return both your ship and the settler to your supply. Later, like with any settlement next to the coast, you can upgrade it to a settlement harbour for two ore and two grain. While a harbour settlement counts as two victory points, it only produces one resource per adjacent hex, just like a normal settlement. You can then use this to build a new settler or a ship. The settler goes in the basin of the harbour. If it's already occupied, you must clear it first. Also, remember that settlers cannot move by land. They can only be transported by ship. Also, you cannot use those to discover hexes. Only ships can do that. The gameplay goes on and on clockwise until one player reaches eight points in his or her turn and is declared the winner. Now let's look at scenario two, pirate layers. In this scenario, we'll use the same rules as scenario one, but you'll also learn how to use pirate ships, crews, and how to attack the pirate layers. For the scenario, use the same components as scenario one and add the following components from explorers and pirates. The starting island is the same as the previous scenario. Just add the pieces 2B1s and E to the previous frame and build the board as so. Take the bag for pirate layers, it includes six gold terrain hexes. Add the respective three to both the orange sun and the green moon piles before shuffling them and randomly placing them like this. Take the six pirate layer tokens, place them face down on the board here. Place the mission marker next to the board and place one marker for each player here. Give the same pieces and gold to the players and add the following components, one pirate ship and the nine crew members. To start, you can use the same preset starting positions of the first scenario. You can also decide to start more like the base Catan game. Now each player starts by placing the harbour settlement first along the coast here. Then the regular settlement may be placed anywhere on the island within the standard two space distance. You start with the resources surrounding that settlement. The roads are only placed at the end, starting with the player who placed the last settlement. That same player places both his road and his ship loaded with settlers. All other players do so in clockwise order. I recommend you play this game with at least three players, but there is a setup for two players in the rules. Now, before uh, we look at the pirate ship, let's have a look at the crew. From now on, for one ore and one wool, you can also build one specialist crew. In this mission, they are used as warriors. When you build a crew, you place it in your harbour settlement. During your movement phase, you can transfer it to a ship touching your harbour. Up to two of them can ride on each ship at a time. You can continue your move after loading or unloading them. Crews cannot move over land or from ship to ship. However, they can be transferred from one ship to another through a harbour. You can also remove pieces from a ship at any time, just return it to your supply. Now, let's have a look at the new pirate ship. Each player has one. 
Now, when a player rolls a 7, in addition to robbing players who have more than 7 cards, the active player also brings his pirate ship in play. You can place the ship on any sea hex that isn't adjacent to the starting island or on a frame of the board. It works pretty much like the robber in the base game. If you place it next to another player's ship, take one of the resource cards randomly. This does not affect settlements or harbor settlements. Also, if and only if the player doesn't have resource cards, the active player can take one gold. Remember that there can only be one pirate ship at a time on the board and it stays here until another seven is rolled. If another player had the pirate ship on the board, return it to the supply and place the active pirate ship anywhere it's allowed, including where the previous one was. Apart from being like the robber, the pirate ship also slows down other players' ships by forcing them to pay a tribute. Once per turn, if you move your ship past a pirate ship that is not yours, you must pay one gold. You pay to the supply, not the owner of the pirate ship. Even if you move across more than one edge, it's still only one gold per turn and per ship. So if you move two ships like that, pay two gold to the supply. If you build a ship next to a pirate, or if you just leave it without moving, you do not pay the tribute, you only pay to move. Finally, you must pay the tribute, even if you have already spent four gold buying two resources. Now, let's have a look at how we chase away the pirate ship. If one of your ships has not moved, and if it is next to your pirate ship, it can roll one die to try to chase away the pirate ship. On a six, return that pirate ship to the supply and place your own and take one of the resource cards randomly. The ship used to move away the pirate can now move without paying a tribute, but if you fail to chase away, you must pay the tribute if you pass by the pirate ship. Now let's look at how to play the missions. From here on, each scenario will have one or more missions. Each will be stored in its own bag. Now in this scenario, it's about attacking the pirate layers. Each time you complete a mission, move the marker up one space on the mission board. If another player is already there, place your marker on top. At the end of the game, you score the corresponding victory points. If your marker is the farthest at the end of the game, you also score the victory point card worth one victory point. If more than one marker is on the top spot, it's the one at the bottom who scores it as it was the first to arrive there. To score the mission track, you need to know how to fight pirate lairs. Let's have a look at how we do that. When you discover a gold terrain on the sun or moon islands, place one of the pirate lair tokens from the supply stack face down and collect two gold. To conquer the pirate lair, players need to bring three warrior crews on it. They can be transferred from any ship touching the gold hex. Note that in this scenario, crew can only be disembarked on pirate lairs, nowhere else. They can come from one or from multiple players, but as soon as there's three of them on the lair, the lair is captured. The active player finishes his movements and then all the players involved in capturing the lair collect two gold and score one victory point on the mission track, starting from the active player and proceeding clockwise. In addition, one of the players could become a hero and score one extra victory point. All players involved in the capture roll one die and add one for each warrior they have on the lair. The player with the highest result scores one more victory point on the mission track and also returns one crew to the supply. In case of a tie, the player who had the most crew wins. If you capture the lair alone, you automatically score the extra point. To indicate the pirate lair was captured, flip the token to reveal the number. They can be shipped next turn. You may now build settlements near the gold. If the number is rolled, score two gold. As always, keep in mind the two space distance. The first player to reach 12 victory points during their turn is declared the winner. To learn how to play the scenarios three and four and then the full game, watch my other video. For now, my tips to win at Catan Explorers and Pirates are start by watching my tips on the Catan base game video. They all apply here as well. Well, you can jump straight into the full game in Scenario 5. It's probably easier to go step by step. This is not a Catan base game. You should not spend too much time building on the main island. You should really focus on discovering. Uh, it will pay off more at the end. It's a good idea to build a second ship quickly because it will accelerate discovering the two islands and building settlements. Well, it's one of those rare Catan games you can play at two players. It's a lot better to play it at three or more players.
So that's how you play the Catan Explorers and Pirates expansion. It's a great Catan to take it to a completely different level. It is very enjoyable. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe or leave in the comments a game you'd like me to teach. I'll make more games easy soon. Bye now.